In this video, I'm going to tell you about the seven new audio features that were added into Ecamm Live version 3.10. So let's just get straight on into it, shall we? Uh, and let's come down here to the sound effects window just down at the bottom. Uh, now, what they've added in this version is the ability to play uh, sound effects over one another. Or rather, um, there is a distinction really between sound effects, as in, you know, small little clips, something like this. Hopefully, not too many people I know hear that sound anymore. <laughs> um, but then also there is music as well. And I think it's a bit of a, a misnomer, really, to call this sound effects, because I, I would think of sound effects as more like those short things as opposed to music files. Well, what they've done is they've added the ability to be able to play some things over the top of others. And specifically, they're doing a little bit of calculation to work out the length of the audio track to decide whether they think it is either a music track or whether it is some form of sound effect, some short sound effect. Uh, and so what that means is when you play a piece of music if you go to play another piece of music it's kind of figuring out well you probably don't want to play these two tracks one over another because it will sound odd so when you go to play another piece of music then it will actually stop the first piece of music and it will start playing the second one however if you play a short sort of sound effect that will still play over the top of the music and it doesn't actually stop the music from playing so I'll do that again so that is that now we can play these sound effects over the top of music. And obviously, if you've, if you've got some sort of live stream where you've got background music, you may not want uh, that to stop just because you've played one of your little audio effects. So that is the first little feature that has been added in. Now, uh, you may not be aware, but uh, you can create groups uh, just down here. Click on the little uh, group. This is not a new feature, by the way, but you can create groups of uh, sound effects. Uh, and then rather than playing sort of one by one, clicking on the little play buttons to uh, play the piece of music, uh, you can actually just click up here to play the group instead. So if you wanted to have some background music playing on your live stream, for example, you could just throw a load of tracks into a folder or into a group uh, and then play the group instead. And then it's going to sort of work its way through these tracks. Uh, you can then click on the little uh, cog wheel here and you've got this option to loop. Now, again, this is not a new feature, so that means that these are just gonna then continually loop. But what they've added is these two little buttons here. So a next track and previous track. So now uh, you can actually skip through the tracks. Obviously, you wouldn't wanna just go here and uh, select the specific track because that would then break it from playing in this, uh, this loop as such. Uh, so here, we're still playing from here. Um, but we are going to just skip forwards and backwards. So that is the next new feature. Another new feature related to this is that also they've now added integration with your Mac's media keys. So if you look on your keyboard and you've got the uh, forward and backwards and play and pause, which is F7 and 9 for forwards and backwards and F8 usually for pause. So if I press that now, and that will actually just pause the music and start the music and uh, skip forwards and backwards. So I'm just doing this now with the uh, the keyboard on my Mac. Uh, and this also means that anywhere else that you can control these sort of standard media uh, keys, such as uh, on Stream Deck, for example, you'd be able to skip forwards and backwards through tracks that way as well. So that is the uh, media keys. Whilst we are still actually in this window, uh, you'll notice down here that we've got uh, now this time showing, and this is showing the time remaining of the track that is playing. This is actually quite useful if you are someone who changes up the music if you do live streams and you uh, change up the music on your little intro countdown timers for example, and you want to know what you should set your countdown to to be exactly the same length as the track. Well, now when you start a track, you could just come down here and look and say, okay, that's two minutes, 40 seconds. I need for the countdown to be exactly the same length as the track. So that just shows it there. Obvious other uses are if you're playing clips or things like that, you've just got this visual cue of uh, how long you've got, uh, lo got remaining. Uh, by the way, if you... Uh, want to stay abreast of all things Ecamm Live, uh, then definitely go and head out, uh, check out rather, my Ecamm Live Masterclass at ecamlivemasterclass.com. Uh, this is basically over 150 videos continually updated with the latest information. So as Ecamm Live comes out with new features, this is the place where you'll find everything up to date. Think of it as your continually updated Ecamm Live encyclopedia for all you need to know about Ecamm Live. Uh, there is $150 worth of bonuses included uh, and the price of the masterclass is 147 So effectively, 
your three dollars up before you even start <laughs> so you can sign up today it's lifetime access and uh, as i say it will be there continually updated from beginner through to advanced and it also covers things like using uh, ecamm live with microsoft teams with uh, zoom uh, even with discord and various other different things like that how to uh, uh, use stream deck effectively with ecamm live and also how to use ecamm live to give uh, engaging presentations with PowerPoint and Keynote as well. So lots of content in there, as I say, continually updated. So check that out today, ecamlivemasterclass.com. Let's come back to this demo though uh, and cover off these uh, few remaining features. Um, so you may be aware that you can add music to specific scenes. So if I come over here, I've got these three demo scenes. Look, that scene number one, scene number two, and scene number three. Uh, so if you take a track and you just actually drag it onto the scene, just like this, uh, and drop it, then that music is now playing in this scene. If I come to the next scene, uh, it's also playing behind there. But well, now we can change this behavior because if I come to this little uh, cogwheel, in fact, the default behavior before was that it would stop. So when you went from one scene to another, it would stop. So you can still do that here if I say stop when scene ends. So I'm just coming to the little cogwheel here. Uh, and you can see that you've also got some volume control on there as well. So you can control this, uh, basically how loud this is in this particular scene. Let's leave it there for the time being though. So now when I go to the next scene, uh, that music has stopped. If I go back to scene one, it starts again. That's actually what used to happen uh, before. But now in 3.10, you can uh, change this to uh, not stop when the scene ends. And now when I go to the next scene, uh, the music keeps playing. Okay, so that's uh, one thing. But what you can also then do is if I drag in the music here and I come to this slider uh, and I actually put the slider lower. So the other one was about 100, I think. Let me put this down to say 30. The effect that this has is, if I come into scene number one again, we've got the music a bit louder. In fact, let me just turn the general volume up. There we go. So that's how loud we've got the music. But now when we come into the second scene, the music level has it's continued playing from where it left off, uh, but the volume has just gone down slightly. Uh, and now if I come to scene three, it's uh, just continuing at that volume. What you could do is you could maybe even come in here to scene number two and let's say stop when this scene ends. So what, why might you want to use this? Well, let's say you've got something where you've got like an introduction, uh, maybe an intro to your live stream or something like that. You want some music playing as an introduction uh, and then you want that music to keep on playing. Uh, but as you go into like a little spoken part at the beginning, maybe a verbal introduction, then as you come into your next scene, you want the volume to just dip down so that you can talk over it and then maybe you're going to get straight on into the the main majority of your content and you want the music gone all together and now it's gone so it's just a nice way that you can control the audio levels and sort of do sort of manual ducking if you like of the audio uh, at different points and obviously this could just run through a whole series of scenes as well however you want to uh, to work that or you may want to have it so that you can just go back and forth so let me say if i come to this one and whoops daisy come to scene number two Let's say I wanted this to go uh, not stop. You could just be cycling to these scenes. So this one, the music is louder. And then when you want to say something, you come into this scene with the music lower. And then the music's going back up again. However you want to use this, this is up to you, obviously. <laughs> but it's a nice little feature nonetheless. And you can always get rid of these tracks, by the way, from the scene just by clicking the little cross to delete them. And if I come to this one, We've got it in here, just click on this little uh, cross icon and it'll delete the music from that scene. The music is still going to be down here though. Uh, the next one is we've also got fading of the music, which is handled a little bit different to how it used to be. So if I start a track again, um, if I press the stop button, which we've got down here, so this will just stop all, uh, all music. Uh, so if I just press that one, it pretty much just stops quite abruptly actually. Uh, well, what we can also do here is if I come over to the effects window, if I mute it, and uh, you've also got this button on your stream deck, so if I mute it, uh, what it does now is it actually fades it out. And again, if I unmute, then it fades it in. So it's just a subtle difference really between that sort of abrupt stop and it actually just fading in and out like that. So uh, that is another feature that was added in. Uh, let's have a look at the final feature that I want to cover, which is in the system preferences. And then we'll go to the audio section. 
in the audio section, we've uh, now got this option to enable echo cancellation for external speakers. Uh, we've had echo cancellation in here all along, but uh, what that did was it would sense when you'd got your um, speakers set to your computer's built-in speakers. Uh, and then what it would do is uh, if it sensed that you were using your built-in speakers, it would do the echo cancellation thing so that you didn't get feedback coming through to your uh, microphone or the audio feeding back into your microphone from your speakers. Uh, but one thing that this didn't really cover is if you had got a set of external, say, desktop speakers, but they were plugged into your headphone socket because it was just assuming that if something was plugged into your headphone socket, it would be your headphones. But in actual fact, obviously, a lot of people might have some sort of desktop speakers that are just plugged into the jack for the headphones. Uh, so basically now this one here, enable echo cancellation for external speakers. Uh, this covers the option when you have got a set of speakers that are plugged into your headphone jack in your computer. And so then it will allow you to do the uh, echo cancellation then as well. So it's just another type of, uh, of echo cancellation. Uh, so that is all for the audio settings, but don't go anywhere because <laughs> there is more great videos coming up all about the other new features of Ecamm Live, and those are coming up right now over on the right-hand side. So I'll see you in those videos 